back for another lab video. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the sphenoid bone and the ethmoid bone. So starting with the sphenoid bone, we're gonna look at an isolated sphenoid, and then we'll look at what it looks like in the skull. So the sphenoid is made up of these wings that are coming out. So this top portion is gonna be much thinner and smaller in size, so that's called the lesser wing. So this portion coming out here is the lesser wing. And then down here, this is gonna be referred to as the greater wing. It's gonna be separated by this gap here. We have lesser and greater wing. And then these parts of the bones that are extending down are called the pterygoid process. Okay, the whole thing is called the process going down. Okay, and then right in the middle, we're gonna have this structure here called the cella tersica. Stands for Turkish saddle. Uh, I guess they thought it looked like the way the saddle looked on that particular style. So this bowl area right in the middle, it's called the cella tersica. If you're looking at some other atlases, they might be labeling different parts of that, but you just have to know kind of right in the center. Then looking at all the different holes. So there's quite a bit of holes on this phenoid. So starting, looking back at the lesser wing, you can find these little hooks here. So within those is gonna be a hole or near those. So this hole is called the optic canal. That's what your eyeball uh, is attached to the optic nerve. It's gonna be running through the optic canal. You could also say the optic foramen. Okay, so that's gonna be kind of part of that lesser wing. And then as we move down, so this groove, this hole that's found between the lesser and the greater wing is called the superior orbital fissure. So the reason it has that name, we'll bring the skull in for now. So within the orbital region, can you see, I know those, there's two sets of fissures, these gaps here. So you have one on top and you have one underneath as well. We don't really have to know the underneath one, inferior orbital fissure, but for now we're gonna learn this is the superior orbital fissure. Okay, that's where it gets the name because it's in the eye region and it's the one that's situated above. Okay, so we have this one, that superior orbital fissure. You kind of think you go fission in the fissure or something like that. Okay, that superior orbital fissure is gonna be pointing to this hole here called foramen rotundum. I thought it was very round and rotund. We have one on this side. And then the other two holes are gonna be kind of on the other end of the greater wing. So this one looked very much like an oval. So make it sound kind of Latin. This is the foramen ovale, either side there. And then that one is going to this tiny little hole called the foramen spinosum, a little bitty spinosum. Okay, and on these, if you put foramen spinosum or spinosum foramen, that's fine. Either one of those um, ways to um, put that word. Okay, so let's look at where these structures are in an intact skull. So looking in here, so right in the middle is going to be the cella tersica through there. And then this portion coming up here, that's part of the lesser wing. And then the lower part, the broader region, is going to be all part of the greater wing meeting up with the temporal bone. And then in between the lesser and the greater wing is that superior orbital fissure through there. That's gonna be pointing to the foramen rotundum. And then the next one back, we have foramen ovale, and then the foramen spinosum, that one back there. So those two are gonna be parallel with this other hole that we discussed previously for the temporal bone, which is the carotid canal. Okay, so those are running near each other when you're looking at an interior view. Another hole we have, so located further up, so within the lesser wing, is gonna be the optic canal. And as we bring this through, you can imagine your eyeball is gonna be attached to the optic nerve going through that optic canal. The larger hole in the orbital region is this one here, that superior orbital fissure. So keep in mind the terms optic and orbital are similar, but they don't mean the same thing. So sometimes students call this the orbital canal. That's not correct. This is the optic canal, specifically referring to the eyeball. Okay, and then another portion of the sphenoid can be seen behind the teeth, behind the maxilla. Those things that are sticking down are those same pterygoid processes, that vomer in the middle there. Okay, so that's gonna be everything to know for the sphenoid. Oh, one thing I'll say, as maybe a silly way to help you remember, a mnemonic device, I just made this one up to help me remember the order of the holes. 
So optic canal is up here. You have to remember that one. And then starting with the superior orbital fissure, a little sentence I told myself, I said, super rodents only spit. And it makes no sense, but maybe it can help you remember super for superior orbital fissure, rodents for rotundum, only for ovale, spit for spinosum. So maybe that can help you remember the order of all those for Raymond. Okay, next thing we'll look at is the ethmoid, which is this walnut-shaped bone. So on the top of the ethmoid is this peak coming up called the Crista galley. So that comes from galleys, referring to a rooster. It's kind of that thing on the top of a rooster's head. It's what they thought this looked like. And then situated on either side, there's going to be a groove. This is called the cribriform plate. You can kind of think Crista's sitting in her crib. Okay. These holes here are leading into the ethmoid sinuses, is what that is representing. But we got cribriform plate on either side. You have a nerve that sits in that cribriform plate, your olfactory nerve for smelling. Another plate we have is going right down the center. So we got Christigalli up here. So then leading down right in the center is called the perpendicular plate. Okay, I think it's running perpendicular with a line here. So we have the perpendicular plate. On either side, the smooth, flat surface of the ethmoid is called the orbital plate. That's showing up in the orbital region. We'll look at that on an intact skull. And then we have our um, superior and middle nasal conch, or conche. So superior are very short. They're situated the most furthest up. So this is gonna be that superior nasal conch. I think it's short and superior. And then the middle is going to be through here, and it's winging all the way back. So the middle is much larger in comparison. Another way to think of that is middle is going to be on either side of that perpendicular plate. So middle is just lateral to those two. Okay, keep in mind some students call this medial, okay, but that's not really correct because it's referencing something above in the middle and below with inferior nasal conch. So be sure to remember this is middle. So if I'm going to identify this, I'll put the arrow, the sticker way back here. Superior, I put it on this little ledge right here. So what does this look like in an intact skull? Starting with an interior view. So we have this bone. Imagine squishing it down. So this part here, and this part here is the Crista galley. The thing coming up. And then the grooves on either side is the cribriform plate. This model is showing these holes in here, representing the nerve as extending down into there for your smelling going into the nasal cavity. Um, the orbital plate on the sides of the ethmoid is shown in the orbital region behind the lacrimal bones. You can see it on this side as well. So we have lacrimal bone, and then here is going to be the orbital plate. So that's going to be the same smooth structure right there. That's what you're seeing through there. And then in the nasal cavity, right in the center, is going to be the perpendicular plate. That's what meets up with the vomer, forming your entire nasal septum. And then these grooves on either side are representing the middle nasal conch. You can't see the superior nasal conch because they're too far up, so you'll only be able to see it on an individual ethmoid bone. So these two that you're seeing here are the middle nasal conch, conche. And then remember, these ones down here are the inferior nasal conch. So they're the lowest ones uh, throughout all those structures. Okay, so I think that's everything to know for the sphenoid and ethmoid bones.